Hi everyone, this is Tammy Hands from Tammy Hands Ministries, and I'm so happy that you found this video. God has been giving me his word, his messages, visions and dreams, and he wants me to share those with you. And um, um, if you want to see some of my other videos and messages from God, you can go on Tammy, T-A-M-I, Hands, H-A-N-D-S, uh, Ministries on YouTube to find more of the videos. And you can also go to my website, TammyHandsMinistries.com, if you want to find out some other things that I'm doing there. That would be great. So um, um, I just want to go ahead and, and let you know that um, I am led by Holy Spirit. And um, so it's a one-time take. And a lot of times Holy Spirit will come through the message. Um, sometimes I'll become emotional because uh, it's the Spirit of God. If When He comes on you, you can have the peace of God or very emotional. Some people get angry when they're delivering God's message. That's happened to me a few times when God really wants you to accentuate his messages. Um, so, um, you know, I pray before I start the video and allow Holy Spirit to work through me. So God gave me this message um, actually on June 29th, 2022. But um, so I'm going to read you that message because I wrote it all down. Um, but but then Holy Spirit may lead me into um, say something else or at the end of the message. I never know. So it's a one time take. We don't want to stop and keep starting it because once the flow of Holy Spirit is coming through, um, we we don't want to interrupt with that. So I've made some crazy, you know, mistakes and all kinds of things during the videos. And that's just how it has to be. It's this is <laughs> authentic and not Hollywood, Hollywood style. Um, so if you like this video and you want to, you know, give me the thumbs up, um, share the video or subscribe, that would be great. I'm just, you know, trying to be obedient and get God's word out. Um, so uh, here we're going to go um, with this message. So as I was saying, this message um, came to me on um, June 29th, 2022, around 1.25 in the afternoon. And what's funny is that sometimes you really remember the messages um, even if you, you know, I always try to record them on my, uh, my phone or um, write them down or type them out depending on where I am when the message, God starts speaking to me. Um, and um, this I recorded in a book that um, I had on my desk. And um, I, I totally forgot writing this message because when God comes upon me, um, sometimes you, you become very relaxed and the peace of God comes over you. And sometimes you don't even really remember the message, which is so strange. And I went to write something else in this book. And so I went to the last page where I had finished and I saw that I actually wrote this message. There was a couple of messages from that day, like right in a row. And once I read them, I remembered them, but I actually closed my book kind of forgot about it until I came back to it just a few days ago. So that's why this one is from June 29th. And, um, um, you know, sometimes as I was saying, when God speaks to us, it's, we remember the message and then, then other times you don't. And, um, it, it, because your God comes upon you and you, you're under the spirit. So, um, that's another topic for another day. If you've never been touched by Holy Spirit and been slain in the spirit, which is like a, a peace and a relaxation that comes over you, you almost can fall asleep and, uh, it's, it's that relaxing. Anyway, I want to give you this message. Um, all of God's messages are great. And I always say, oh, this is a really good one today. But they are always great messages, but um, I always feel that, yes, it's a great one. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, June 29th, 2022, 1.25 p.m., I, I start to hear God's word, and, and I started to write this message down. He says, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Even though he is the Lord, he's telling us to give him praise. So, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And he says, What kingdom is this? Question mark. Many do not know many have forgotten what left is they have forgotten left is right and right is wrong they are forgetting um and it's a me 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 society god says and people have it backwards that's why he says people think left is right and right is wrong and he says god says how much longer can it go on disturbing to say the least who are you in christ 
Do you even know who Christ is? Um, oh, how my children have fallen. How, how many, how, oh, how many of my children have fallen. Um, you are fallen in a, in a fallen world that is falling down more and more with each passing day. And God says, we need to stand up now. Take your place as an heir to your king. Stop living under the thumb of the enemy. Take back, I'm just going to put my book here. Take back your place of royalty. Know your place in Christ. You are an heir to a king. Um, you are the head, not the tail. And if you go to Deuteronomy 28, 13, it talks about God saying that we are the head and the enemy is the tail. And God is saying, we need to remember we are up here and the enemy is down here. We are, we are not under the feet of the enemy. The enemy is under our feet because he is the tail. We are the head. And God says to get your troubles under your feet. Whew. Hmm. Stomp on the enemy. Destroy his evil works. Rise up. Put on God's full armor. Go to battle prepared. So if you go to Ephesians 6, 10 to 14, it talks about putting on all of God's full armor. Stop letting the enemy infiltrate your mind and your body. You must fight back to win this battle. And um, so God describes, if you were in a real battle, if you were in a real army, a, 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 a real um, uh, battle, and you were in the army, I should say, um, if you were fighting, you know, you know, country against country, let's say, they give you armor to put on. You have a helmet. You have, um, you know, a bulletproof vest. You have a, a, a rifle with ammunition. You have army boots on. And, and um, what other, you know, whatever other um, armor they give you. So that is the armor that we have because we live in a uh, physical world we can see it with our eyes on earth but when we um, are talking about the enemy he lives in the spiritual world where God lives in the spiritual world and we can't see it with our um, physical eyes because we are living in an earthly flesh world and but God's armor is made um, is from a fleshly world Whew. Hmm. Uh, sorry a, a, a spiritual world could feel Holy Spirit coming on me. I get like super goosebumps, goosebumps in my hair, on my body. Um, so God says, if an army was coming after you to shoot you, would you just stand there unprotected, naked, no armor? Would you allow them to capture you and imprison you? No, you wouldn't. So fight the spiritual army of your enemy, which is Satan, Lucifer, and, uh, and the fallen angels, the devil. He says, put on guard, God's spiritual armor. Take your sword in hand, which is the Bible. And let his name flow from your tongue at all times. He says, resist and persist the enemy. Um, take charge and take your kingdom back. Take back your land. Take back your life. Take back your rights. Take back your who you are in Christ. Woo! Woo! And God says, fight for your king. You know, back in the old days when there was kings and queens, yeah, there's still a king and queen in, 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 in you know, England and, and I don't even know what other countries. Ugh! Um... Ooh, when Holy Spirit comes upon me, and, and maybe yourself too, it's almost hard to speak. And oh, God says, um, like like in the you know you know in the you know the eighteen hundreds, seventeen hundreds, and you know way back thousands of years ago, kings and queens ruled the the world or the or the countries. Now we have governments and and you know politicians. But, you know, the king and the queen, um, you know, or the king would rule a country. 
and the king, you were, you were, you would honor your king, whatever country you lived in, and you would be willing to go to battle to die for your king, your kingdom. And, and people have forgotten that God is our king and we, he has a kingdom, which is heaven. And we need to fight for God. We need to fight for our king. We need to fight for our kingdom because we are going to heaven one day. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, and you, you believe that Jesus came and died on the cross to take away your sins, to save you from that enemy who is in a spiritual world, Lucifer, the devil, and, and Satan, and the fallen angels that fell from heaven. You have to put on your spiritual armor, which is God's armor. And we need to, God is saying, we need to fight for our rights, fight for our kingdom, fight for our freedoms. And, and our kingdom is, is the kingdom of God, heaven. That's our kingdom. That's who we need to fight for. We don't need to fight for this earthly life that we're living here. It's such a short life on earth. And, and this is going to end. And our soul has to go somewhere. We need to fight for our, our uh, eternity kingdom, which is heaven, which is God and Jesus. We need to be fighting for the kingdom of God. So God is saying, fight for your king. Who's your king? Our king is God. Our king is Jesus. We have forgotten that. Many people have forgotten. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're falling under. We are falling, um, you know, under the control of our governments, of our countries. Our government is not our king. Our government is not our kingdom. Um, you know, these rulers of our physical world that we're living in right here is not our true king. Our true king is father god in heaven and our true kingdom is heaven and that is what we need to fight for so he says put on your spiritual armor ephesians 6 uh, 10 to 14 go to the bible put it on and 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 uh, resist and resist the enemy and persist do not give up because the enemy is relentless and we are living in end times i mean it could last another 50 okay it could last six months this world it could last um six years it could last um um 50 years 100 years it, it, it could be 200 years we don't know when the exact last day is but we need to prepare ourselves now because we never know when the last day is and we need to prepare our children we need to pass on what god is telling us that that Everyone is, is forgetting who the true king is, which is God, and our true kingdom, which is heaven. Um, because we will all pass. We will all leave this physical world. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't happen in my lifetime or your lifetime, we need to raise up our children knowing who their true king is, knowing who, who what kingdom we need to fight for. And we need to know that the enemy is real and that we need to fight against him and, and we need to resist and persist. Those are the words that God gave me right there. And, um, um, yes, yes, yes. It is our job to prepare our children. So we don't know if end times are going to happen in, in exactly in my lifetime or your lifetime, depending on how old you are. Uh, you know, the end could come tomorrow god always says fill your lamp be prepared we never know and i'm not doom and gloom that is for sure because when the end end comes we win we win we get to go back to our father we get to go to our true kingdom we get to go see our king and the enemy is a loser he lost the battle already when jesus came and gave up his life for us he the enemy was already defeated when jesus spilled his blood on the cross and 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 took back the keys um you know from from the enemy the keys for the grave and and um the keys for heaven so the enemy is already defeated he's uh delusional and thinks that he still has rights and he's fighting really hard because he knows end times are coming and he's trying to hurt us at the last minute he's trying to take us away from god he's trying to put a wedge there so that you'll think god isn't real he's trying to put blinders on you at the last minute he's trying to um, whisper in your ears terrible things he's trying to tell you well where's your god now you know forget about him i can give you riches i can give you pleasures 
He's trying to pull you away from God. And we cannot let that, let that happen. And God says, resist. Whew. Resist and persist because the devil is persistent. And we need to push back, not fall under his thumb because the enemy is living here on the planet with us. And sometimes people think God always, oh, he's, he's way, he's far, he's in heaven. Well, where is he? He's not around me. He's not here helping me. And so the enemy seems to manifest right now. And so, you know, people are falling for the pleasures of the world and we need to fight against the pleasures of the world. It's so short term. It's so short lived. When you fall for the pleasures of the world, you are giving into the enemy and you are allowing him to take you and to put a, a wedge between you and God. And you cannot allow that to happen. You need to wake up and know that the enemy is persisting and we need to resist and persist just like God says. Put on his armor, know your place in God. And he says, take charge and take your kingdom back. Take back your land, take back your life. Take back your rights. Take back who you are in Christ. Fight for your true king. We are in a battle. And, and the sooner you realize that, the better off you will be. And you need, we all need to come together as Christians and, and to fight for our Father God, fight for our rights, and fight. We need to fight for our rights right now while we're on this planet. And I, I'm, I'm sure that's what he means by this message. Fight for your land. Fight for your rights. We have rights as Christians and the government, the, the false king of this earth, our governments of each country, are trying to take our rights away as Christians, as human beings. Even it doesn't matter what religion you are, they're trying to take your rights away. Um, um, they're, they're, they're trying to um, shut us down. They're trying to put us under their thumb because the governments and these um, leaders of today's times they are under attack of the enemy, whether they realize it or not. I'm pretty sure they don't realize it. The enemy has whispered in their ears, let's pass this law, let's pass that law. And, and all these laws that are being passed is shutting down human rights more and more and more. And we are all being put in a cage and, and our rights are, are being squeezed and squeezed. And when God says, take back your land, it means take back our, our rights as humans. And, 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 he, and, he, and he says, take back your rights. So um, you need to fight for who your king is, which is God and Jesus, Holy Spirit. And, and um, we need to fight for our rights as human beings and as Christians. And we need to know who we are in Christ. We are an heir to Almighty Father God. And um, let me just go on here. Um, take back your place of royalty, God says. Take back your place as royalty. Know your place in Christ. You are an heir to a king. And do not let anyone take that away from you. Father God created everything. He is our true king. And we are children of God. He put the spark in our mother's womb. And, and we are all a spark of God. We are all a little piece of God. And we are royalty because our God is royalty. We are children of God. So we are royalty. And we need to remember who we are. And we are children of God. And Christ saved us. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are an heir through Christ. You are an heir in Christ. I will take this time a lot in the end of a lot of my videos, um, Holy Spirit leads me to help bring people to salvation. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is the most important thing that you will do in your life. No, it isn't going out partying. It isn't, you know, buying the best car and the best house and the best clothes and going on vacation. That isn't, and even getting married. Those aren't the most important things you're going to do in your life. The most important thing is to allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, to accept the greatest gift that he has given us. He has given up his life for us so that Satan can't have us. That is my next message because God gave me another message after this one and I'm going to make another video right after this one and, and talking a little bit more about that. Plus, I have another video out about salvation that God described it. But a lot of times at the end of the video, he leads me into helping to lead you to Christ. If you have 
wondered what it means to be saved. It means to be saved from the enemy. When Jesus, you know, God gave us his son. Jesus came from heaven and he came down as a man on earth. And, and he knew what his mission was. He knew he was going to die on that cross. And when he did that, he spilt his blood. He was killed, brutally killed on that cross. A terrible death for us to save us from the enemy, to save us from Satan, to save us from hell. If you accept what Jesus did for you, that he died on the cross, he gave us a choice. We have a choice to say, Jesus, I want you. I accept what you did for me. I accept that you gave up your life for me to save me from death. Now we say, I want you, Jesus. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Savior. And when we do that, we give our life to Jesus. We give our life to God. And now the enemy, Satan, cannot take our life. We have to give our, our soul to somebody. When we leave this earth, we have a soul. We have a spirit living inside of us. And that body is going to die. Sorry to sound morbid, but it is one day. And the good news is, is that our spirit and our soul lives on for eternity and it's gonna it's gonna go up or down it's gonna go to heaven or to hell so you have to decide now while you're alive while you're still breathing while you can still make the conscious decisions decision you have to make the decision now you can't say oh, i'll think about it later we don't know if you have tomorrow we don't know how how long we're gonna live we don't know when our last day is we need to make the decision today don't put it off, my friend. You don't know when your last day will be. And, and you need to decide who you want to give your soul to. It's kind of like having a will. A lot of people, they don't make a will. And then they pass away. And, and then the, the estate is screwed because you don't know who's getting what. And it's, 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 it's havoc. And sometimes the government just takes your estate because you didn't say who you want it to go to. You need to say who you want your soul to go to. You have you have something in you that needs to go somewhere when you when you pass away. Not your riches, not your, you know, you know that that's decided here on the earth. But you can't take that with you. The only thing that's going to go somewhere is your spirit and your soul. And you need to say while you're still alive who you want your soul and your spirit to go to. So this is kind of like your, your written will of where you want your soul to go to. You need to say it now. And you either are going to go with Jesus, Father God, or the enemy has the right to take you. If you, if you leave it and you, you don't decide who you want to go with and you want to stay on the fence, be my guest. But you don't know when your last day is going to be. So God is always urging in all of the messages to... He wants us to be saved. He wants us all to make it to heaven. He wants us all to come back to him. He is our father. And all you need to do is just simply say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And there's just a small little prayer that I can help you with. And I'm about to do that right now. And I'm going to pray right now to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I ask that you will prepare the hearts and the minds and the souls and, and the, the ears and the eyes and the mouth of the person that is watching this video that is going to give their life to, and their soul to Jesus Christ right now to prepare them to, to, to truly mean it and um, to prepare their hearts for, to, to accept Jesus. And I command all wicked and unholy spirits away from the viewers and away from myself um, from stopping their salvation, from stopping them from getting saved. But the enemy will try anything to stop you from getting saved. He will try to change your, your mind at the last second. He will make your computer go dead. He, he will, he will um, try anything to stop this message from coming true or coming through to you. So we cast him under your feet, under my feet, and we bind him to the foot of the cross where he cannot interrupt with this divine intervention from God, which is you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So if you are ready, and you have to mean it, you have to mean it with all your heart. You can't just say the words. God knows when you're like, oh yeah, I accept Jesus Christ. No, you have to be ready. And I'm not pushing you. I'm only here because God is, 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 is allowing me to help you. But if you're not ready, then 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 shut this video off and, and, and resonate it and, and think about it. But you really need to be ready. <laughs> it is the most important thing that you will do in your life. So if you are ready and, and, and you just need to repeat these words and mean it with all your heart, all your guts, all your soul, all your mind. 
You just say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that he arose again and is seated in heaven with our Father God. And I believe that he defeated the darkness when he spilt his blood on the cross for us. And now you would say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I ask Jesus to come and live inside me, to live inside my heart, to fill my heart with his love and his peace and his joy and, and all of all of him inside me. And I ask God for forgiveness of my sins. God just wants you to repent and ask for forgiveness of your sins. He forgives you. You, you just need to ask him. And when you accept, okay, I'm going to come back to that. So you just ask him, God, please forgive me for my sins. I know I've done bad things in my life. Lord, please forgive me. No matter how big or small, he will forgive you. But you got to mean it. And you say, I reject the enemy. I reject the darkness. I reject Lucifer and Satan and the devil. I reject him. And lastly, just thank God. Thank you, God, for saving me today. And God wants you to change. He doesn't want you to keep sinning. Yes, we do because we're not perfect. And we need to go to God when we do sin and say, God, I'm, ah, I screwed up again. Please forgive me, please. But he wants us to try and change from our old ways and step into a new life so that the enemy can't keep dragging you back. He doesn't want you, he doesn't, God doesn't want you to stay in that pit of, of, of uh, depression and addiction and sickness. He, he doesn't want you to stay there. He, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he wants you to step out of that life and into a better life with God and start preparing yourself for heaven and and live a better life so the enemy can't keep dragging you down and hurting you. God loves you now. He doesn't want you to stay in that sinful life because it's it's painful, it's hurtful, it's destructive. No matter what you're doing, because we all do things, God doesn't want us to do that. He wants you to step outside of that and start living like Christ, like, you know, having peace and love and joy in your life and the only way you can live like that is to to put all of that sin behind you and 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 step away from it put the enemy under your feet and start living like you're the head and he's the tail and you got to get strong and say i don't want to do that and if he comes in your eyes or in your ears or you know he starts coming out of your mouth and talking bad about people or being angry and and rude you have to stop and say i don't want to do that anymore i want to live like jesus i want to live for my god i want to live for my king i want to i want to live a holy good life i want to be better and, and 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 i want god to be proud of me and 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 i, I and i just you know god wants you to live a pure life as much as possible while we're on this earth because he doesn't want you to live in pain and suffering and sickness. So you need to put all that crap behind you and step out of the darkness and into the light and, and, and open your Bible. Start reading God's word. That is God's life manual. And it tells everything, the truth in there about the enemy, you know, that he's nothing and he got kicked out of heaven and how glorious God is, how amazing Jesus is and Holy Spirit and, and the way that God wants us to live. It's all in the Bible. So open your Bible, start reading it, start afresh from this moment on. And if you've already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and, and you have just kind of, um, you know, backslid a little bit, just ask God, repent and say, God, please forgive me. I know I haven't talked to you in a while. I haven't come to you in a while, but I, you know, would, could you forgive me? And of course he will. He just wants you to come with a, with a repentful heart and a loving heart and, and, a, and, and, and mean it. And, and just start opening your Bible, start Start refreshing your life and start living for God again. And remember who your true king is. Heaven is waiting for us and it's glorious and it's amazing. And I, for one, can't wait to get there. I know we have this life here that we got to live and it's it's a good life, you know, in, in a lot of ways. 
Um, it, there's a lot of bad too. And, and heaven is just going to be a million times better. So let's get through this life as easy as possible uh, by pushing the enemy away and putting him under our feet so we have to suffer the least amount of, as possible on this planet and, and be always looking to God, praying to God, glorifying God. And he wants us to love him and to love each other and be kind and good to each other while we're here on this planet and living as Jesus did. You know, you know that old saying, what would Jesus do? It's real. We need to always be thinking like that. What would Jesus do in this situation? So um, that's how I'm going to leave it for today. Um, um, you know, God loves you very much. He wants you to know that. And if you are a new Christian, you can email me in the description below. And, um, you know, Tammy Hands Ministries at gmail.com. Tammy, T-A-M-I, Hands uh, Ministries at gmail.com. You can go to my website and email me there too. Or you can leave a comment right here. I love reading the comments. And I would I would love to help you if you have any questions about being a new Christian or, or anybody who already is a Christian um, who has any questions. And of course, I get questions from people that are, are non-believers. And I welcome all questions um, um, because that is what we as Christians are supposed to do. We're supposed to help each other and love everybody. Believers, non-believers, doesn't matter. We need to all come together and to help each other to know our true King. I wish you all a great day and thank you for watching this video. And if you can like, share and subscribe, that would be great and, and uh, help to get the word out to other people and watch my other videos, which are all messages from God. Precious, precious messages and visions from God, which I for one treasure very much. And um, take care and I will see you on another video. Bye for now, my friend.